At the end of 2014, when Ebola was prevalent and everybody was kind of scrambling to figure out how they're gonna deal with it if an Ebola patient comes in, a small team was put together to, and essentially build a biocontainment unit uh, from the ground up, which we ended up doing and thankfully we did not have to use. Fast forward over time, when this pandemic started to happen, we were already ahead of the curve and had a somewhat plan in place to take care of the patients coming in. Well, we assumed that there was gonna be a, a surplus in the number of patients requiring negative pressure rooms. So we evaluated the entire building. To, in order to do a whole unit, we had to seal off the outside of the unit, um, change the air pressure inside the unit, and exhaust that air outside. Going into the biocontainment unit is like, uh, you know, it, it feels in some ways like a, you know, like a science fiction movie or you know, a Robin Cook novel where you have to get all your equipment ready and then go through basically an airlock and then go into the actual unit where there's a limited number of people in there. I started there in the very beginning when we had just one patient and so kind of had that time to learn how to do things, learn you know how this disease process kind of is expected to go. Right now that we're doing team nursing specifically um, with ICU nurses, with acute care nurses and IMC level nurses. The, the team is amazing. They were put together and the, the reason why I'm so proud of them is the fact that they come from all walks of life, from every unit within the hospital. Everybody willingly and graciously decided to join the team, you know, just from one email going out asking for help. So we have, we have our PPE, we have people watching to make sure we put our PPE on correctly and watching to make sure we wash our hands and watching to make sure that we take our PPE off and wash properly when we come out. But now we really have it down and so the most you're in there is usually about four hours. And after being used to the PPE, it, it's not as bad as it was in the beginning. Um, it definitely gets hot. <laughs> Generally I spend about like two to four hours behind the airlock taking care of patients. At the end of the day, um, there are some things that are always fundamental about, uh, about medical care, and that is that you are trying to take care of a patient who is sick. This is what we live day in and day out. Normal people don't get to see what we're seeing, and they shouldn't have to, and they shouldn't have to deal with their loved one dying and them not being able to appropriately say goodbye. We're taking handprints, we're making handprints and sending that to the family. Any little thing we can do to share the last moment with them so that they have a little piece to hold on to. But this is our reality, this is our 2020 reality. And it's unfortunate, it's sad. Even, even when you're in it, it's sad.